Hi everybody, it's Nikki and I'm doing like my okay, video marathon <laughs> marathon right now of a whole bunch of bad videos, but I'm trying to get them done and Michael Stone, you asked me for a comparison between G6 and Libre and I take these requests very, very seriously. So I've done it um, and I have really, really done it, but I've also included the Guardian because I, th I felt like I should because <laughs> um, it was interesting too. Um, so this video is personal experience, personal thoughts, and a whole lot of stuff that's going to be true for me and my body and my disease. Um, I'm happy to pass on the information. I'm also ultra aware of the fact that whatever I say has been true for me may or may not be true for the next user. Um, but I'm happy to give you guys the numbers as I was able to collect them in my own experience. Um, I think that was it. Okay, so basically I did not go onto the internet. I did not look at other people's comparisons. I was very careful not to because I was trying to think of what has, being aware of these things and really, really spending the last year, you know, examining these things, these sensors and, and accuracy and all this other stuff. Um, I was trying to see what felt like it was the most important to me and to kind of give a unique and sincere, genuine breakdown of, um, of the three sensors um i don't even know what they're called <laughs> so that's a red flag <laughs> um okay so basically the things that i went with were the life the accuracy the lag um charging transmitter signal extending calibrations errors following capability frequency of updated value insertion ease and comfort overall ease of use can be used for treatment, warm-up, applicator inserter, um, and arrows I skipped, so, and waste I skipped. They all have a lot of waste, um, but that's not the most important thing. I'm already two minutes in. I'm gonna get through what I can, and I'm gonna do a part two. <laughs> so you keep you hanging on by the edge of your seat. Okay, so life, here we go. I'll do the G6 and Libre first, because those are the ones that were actually requested, and then I'll tack on the Guardian. Um, the life of the G6 is a, is a 10 day sensor. Um, the Libre, there are two, currently two Libre sensors available. There's a 10 day and a 14 day, but I think that they are transitioning everybody into the 14 day. So I think the 10 day is about to kind of become a thing of the past, um, which is kind of too bad, but that's a different video. Um, so we got 10 days for G6. The Libre is 10 days or 14 days. Um, and the Guardian is supposed to be good for seven days, but that is highly variable. Whereas for the most part, my G6 does seem to go those 10 days um, the Libre definitely goes those 10 days. The Guardian does not definitely go seven days. Um, some people get four days consistently or five days consistently. Some people, you know, get a full seven. Um, accuracy, G6. Okay, so I did a couple of different tests. I've been testing them for a few weeks, but I tried to do just a few days where I kind of, you know, ramped it up a little bit. Um, from 40 readings over five days. Um, these were random readings. They weren't, I wasn't trying to catch anything. It was just kind of like, a, you know, I think I'll do it right now. 75% um, of my G6 readings were within 20% of my BG, uh, my actual BG reading according to my meter. Uh, and I will tell you about this, that this was not as good of a sensor as what I'd had though. And I did decide to calibrate around 24 hours in. Um, so this that 75% was a little bit disappointing because I had seen some really, really good sensors. So it was too bad that that happened to be the one that I got for the video, but I wasn't going to alter it. Um, I did not feel like it truly reflected what I've seen with the Dexcom so far. And I did choose to calibrate around 24 hours in. That calibration did help it. However, I couldn't, it could, I couldn't negate the first 24 hours worth of readings. And so that's where that 75% came from. Um, I do think other sensors have been more around 85 to 90% within 20%. Some of them have been, you know, tighter and within 15%. Okay. My Libre over that same five days, it actually did slightly better than the G6. Um, I was only able to retrieve 33 readings, uh, sorry. And, um, because I was lazy about charging my Libre. So that's, a, that's, that's one thing. Um, so I knocked out about 12 hours of it. Out of 33 tests, 78% of my Libre readings were within 20% of my BG meter reading value. Yeah, okay. Um, Guardian, over that same five days, I always feel like I'm picking on the Guardian, but this, this, these are the numbers. Over that same five days, I retrieved 36 readings from my Guardian. Four were unavailable, unavailable due to sensor updating or past due calibration. Of the 36 readings, 39% were, were within 20% of my BG value. Um, it wasn't supposed to be part of the comparison. I'm doing it because I feel like it should be part of the comparison. 
and I'm not picking on it. It's just why I can't do the guardian anymore. Um, lag. So lag is a big deal for me because especially having just come from a pump where it's determining insulin amount based on my current BG value or my current SG value. Um, I think that it's, I think for many years, you kind of just used your sensor as an idea where you were um, or something just to look at, you know, keep you busy. Um, but when you move into auto mode, you really need to know that it's working with a good number or treatment becomes inappropriate. Um, so I'm interested in lag to no end. And, um, and the Guardian is slow, very, very slow in recovering from a fast rising blood sugar um, or dropping. And so I was very curious, I was really curious to see how the G6 was going to do because soon I'll be putting on my T-Slim and I need it to kind of keep up too so I'm not being suspended inappropriately over there, you know, as well. Um, so this is what I got. I attempted to show lag by tracking my BG SG values during a rapidly changing blood sugar. Um, sorry, I collected readings during two runs, I'm going to call them runs, um, which yielded a combined 35 BG meter readings. Um, each sensor also had 35 readings, so that means that there, so all sensor readings were available for those 35, and a run basically entailed anywhere from 5 to 10 minutes of constant testing while my blood sugar either dropped or uh, rose, but I think that that, I think these are both for, during rebounds. Um, I don't know if any of this makes any sense, I'm trying. Um, okay, so for my G6, 28, 28 out of my 35 or 80% of my G6 or uh, 28 out of 35 of my G6 readings or 80% were within 20% of my BG reading. Um, my general thoughts about the Dexcom so far is it is above average in covering rapidly rising blood sugars. Um, it is average to above average with covering falling blood sugars and it's above average in change of direction. That's kind of generally how I feel about it so far. It's really, really pretty good. Um, it's got strengths and weaknesses. Uh, my Libre. So again, out of 35 readings during, I think, a, ri a rising blood sugar, 30 out of the 35 or 80, 86% of my Libre readings were within 20% of my BG reading. About the Libre in general, I'd say it's very strong in covering a rapidly rising blood sugar, but slow on a falling blood sugar. Um, and it's also very quick to show a change in direction. So the Libre and the Dexcom both are a little bit stronger with the rise than it is with the fall. The Libre tends to overshoot everything. Um, the Dexcom sometimes overshoots, but just by a little, a, you know, a narrow margin. Um, but they're also, the, the Dexcom is better than the Libre at the falling blood sugar, um, but it's not really either one of their strengths. However, I think that that might work well with the T-Slim because it might help those suspends work better. That's not part of the comparison. Okay, the Guardian, 18 out of 35 of those readings, or 51% of my Guardian readings were within 20% of my BG reading. Um, generally speaking about the Guardian, and this is after a, a year and a half of wear, I think it's terrible on um, a rapidly rising blood sugar. I think it often doesn't even reflect the true peak um, until sometimes more than an hour later, if it ever does. Sometimes I'm at a 250 and it never shows higher than a 185. Um, I also think that that messes it up sometimes because if I fall fast from a 250, sometimes instead of starting at a 250, it starts at a 185. So it reflects that drop from a lower value, which is misleading. Um, and I also think that it is moderate when it comes to uh, tracing a falling blood sugar and it's quite slow to show a change of direction. I'm confusing myself with this stuff, so nine minutes. I'll do one more category. Well, I got the three categories in nine minutes. Whew, okay, um, charging transmitter. This should be easier. G6, there is no charging of the transmitter, but it must be replaced in three months. The, the transmitter must be replaced in three months, and you cannot start a new sensor with less than 10 days until expiration. Uh, you do need to charge the reader. And I was gonna say something else, and they do recommend this is something new to me because it's all new. They say that when you remove an old sensor, to wait 10 minutes before starting and before inserting a new sensor, and that's supposed to help kind of cut down on some of the errors. Um, and I also about that about that not being able to start in the last 10 days. I see people messing with a lot of stuff that I'm not there yet, so I don't have it. Maybe there's a way to avoid that. I'm not sure. Um, 
charging transmitter for the for the Libre. Um, this is a disposable transmitter. You don't charge it. You just you. It's all in one box. You put it on and you throw the whole thing out. Um, but you must charge the reader. And I do that usually between every ten days is usually um, sufficient. And the Guardian, you must charge the transmitter between uses, and you must replace the batteries in the charger every few months. Um, my bat my charger is now dead and I've tried changing the batteries and I can't get the it, it's just not going to work um, so that really is an issue uh, not usually that big of a deal but it, it can come up ten and a half minutes in I'm going for part four <laughs> on this video so okay thanks for watching and I'll be back on signal <laughs> Bye.